I, I feel incredibly honoured also to be representing the International Red Cross. They care about only one thing, and that is humanity. This journey is about bridging the gap between Australia and Vietnam. It's about celebrating the connection between the two countries and the 40th anniversary between both Australia and Vietnam and the friendship agreement that we have in place. Well, I'm Pat Farmer and I'm an ultramarathon runner. I've been doing these types of runs for the past 30 years. I was inspired by a little old man by the name of Cliff Young many, many years ago who ran in what was considered as the toughest foot race on earth, the Sydney to Melbourne Ultramarathon. I went on to compete in many, many events. I've raced across America from California to New York, but just recently I've run the length of Vietnam from the Chinese border all the way down to a little village called Nam Can, right down the very southernmost point. Well, we're just here in Mong Cai at the moment, the border town between Vietnam and China. But we actually jumped up on top of one of the rooftops here so that we could get a great panoramic view of both China and Vietnam at the same time. It's uh, more or less the calm before the storm. Everything's nice and quiet here at the moment, uh, but we're about to take off on this journey first thing tomorrow morning, so uh, we're just preparing for everything at this point in time and looking at the arduous task ahead. My we and myself, I made a very simple promise to him, and it was this, that the two of us both Australia and Vietnam would take every single step together from the start all the way through to the finish. The start of the Vietnam run up in Mong Cai, you know you have butterflies going off in your stomach, you're not sure of what is about to happen and every single event is all about the unknown. It's all about just wondering if you've done the training if you have it locked within you to be able to make this thing happen. In the past, and I'll tell you how difficult it is, if you multiply that by two marathons a day or somewhere in that vicinity, you start to get a real handle on how difficult this is. If you're doing 60, 70, 80 kilometers a day, it is just hard work. And then if you stack on top of that the fact that it's incredibly humid over here. I'm getting desperate with this lip of mine. It's really, it's really hurting a lot. I've tried sunscreens and all sorts of things, but um, you know, you just in this humidity, you just sweat everything off or out. Look at this. I mean, I'm no superman, I'm just an ordinary bloke that's just trying to belt out the K's and I feel it just like anybody else, you know, it's, it's hard and it hurts, but um, this is what I do, and this is what I do. It's not easy to keep the motivation all the time day after day, week after week, year after year, to be able to go on from even one decade to the next decade with still the enthusiasm for what you do. And that's where you need some drive and you need some purpose. This is why most of the events that I've ever done have been events that have been there to support others. So I've looked into their eyes, I've looked into their lives, I've seen how difficult some people have found it from one day to the next. And I've used that as my passion to push on, to train hard and to achieve the outcomes I have. My key motivation is I've finished every single thing I've ever started. And I don't want this to ever be the first thing that I don't finish. So my mind doesn't tell me to stop. My body tells me to stop all the time, but my mind tells me to keep going. You know, the key indicator for me is really about announcing to the world that I'm going to do something and then getting out there and doing it. And by that I mean that I set a goal, 
I write it down, I work out strategically how I'm going to achieve that goal, I break it down into bite-sized pieces. It's all like a big mathematical equation and I break it down into piece by piece by piece by piece and the sum total of the whole project is the end result. Charitable causes are the main purpose that I run. They give me a, a purpose to push on when I feel absolutely down and wiped out by reflect on the reason why I'm doing this run. The people and the environment and the things that are in need of me completing the journey, raising funds for that cause and raising awareness around that cause. But this latest run was all about running for clean drinking water and trying to be able to provide people with clean drinking water, clean sanitary conditions through the Australian Red Cross uh, in Vietnam. From the very start through every single town, every single province we've been through, so they greatly appreciate the support that they're getting from the Australian Red Cross uh, and they greatly appreciate the efforts that we're putting in to try and highlight the needs and the concerns of the Red Cross here in Vietnam. So um, it's nice to be appreciated like this and it gives me purpose in what I'm doing. It's incredibly dry. Seems like since we started this run, we've had nothing but coal dust and smog and pollution. And yet, it's such a beautiful place as well. It's such incredible, beautiful people. And if we could just get that sort of thing cleared up around here, man, this would be paradise. I feel absolutely passionate about making a difference to other people's lives because I understand what they must be going through. There's this saying, no man is an island, and uh, it's certainly the, the way it is in my life. Uh, you know, I don't achieve anything on my own, although it has seemed like a solo sport. I don't do that without the support of my children, Brooke and Dylan. Um, they've come over to celebrate Christmas with me. They'll have Christmas and New Year with me, and it'll be great for us all to be together for that very special point in time. Okay, it's nearly Christmas. I've just had a uh, pretty, um, Difficult day, very, very hot out there on the road, but um, as you can see, everybody's celebrating Christmas here as well. I just want to wish everybody very happy and a holy Christmas. We just did to go meet up with Dad. Haven't seen him for two weeks. Pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> hey. Brooke and Dylan will be out there with me on the road and they'll run a bit with me from time to time. They'll spur me on and give me strength. Whenever I do these journeys, the toughest thing has always been away from my family, or been away from Brooke and Dylan in particular. To have me with me means that it's just like running at home now. That all of us need that support network around us. All of us need somebody uh, that believes in us, that supports us. For days when you really inspire people, so many people stand on the side of the road and just clapping and cheering us on. Even the bus drivers are supporting us now. You know, because they see us out here day after day in any weather conditions. And you know, these are the moments where you really make a difference to people's thinking.
Uh, firstly, I would like to say how very honoured I am to be here today, to be running in such a beautiful city. There is this saying that I love, and it is that you're only as good as your last run. And it's so much the case with this last Vietnam run. So many people expected big things of me. But of course, I still had almost 3,000 kilometres to cover. I still had to cover close to two marathons a day, every single day, and there was to be no days off. I had to deal with weather conditions, I had to deal with mishaps along the way, and there were so many things playing on my mind. So this is why you can never afford to take any event easy, and why it's so important to treat every event like it is the most important thing in the world, and just take it just one day at a time, one step at a time, and make sure every single step counts. And I try and eat as healthy as I possibly can all of the time. So I've made health and fitness part of my lifestyle. Look, I have to say, there's a big, big difference with nutrition. And there's a big difference between empty calories and good energy. And I'm fortunate that here in Asia, particularly in Vietnam, I'm able to get my hands on a great carbohydrate diet, to plenty of rices, as they refer to it as pho, but of course that's noodles. Uh, and I'm um, able to get my hands on the French influences, which is bread. Uh, things like bananas, things like fresh fruits, and plenty of them. Yeah, we're just heading into the, new, uh, into the next province, the province of Ding Yang. This is the start of the river systems all the way down to the south. And so we're saying goodbye to the police. The police have been wonderful in securing our safety on the road, very busy roads out of Ho Chi Minh and through to here so far. So we're about to cross over and get new police escorts. Thank you very much, sir. Three months, one week, one day, one 24 hour period out from the start of any major event uh, is always about your focus. It's always about keeping in mind exactly what the task at hand is that you're about to take on. Uh, whether it be three months out, you need to know and understand that every single thing that you do uh, three months out from the event is going to affect the event itself. So it's about having a similar intensity all the way through uh, from a long period out right through to the first step that you take and staying focused on your goal. In training, there is no finish line. We need to back up day after day after day and just get on with the job without a finish line, without the fanfare, without somebody supplying you with food and drinks. Uh, and so it's about personal motivation. It's about having that inner intensity and strength to be able to get out of bed on sometimes a wet, rainy morning and get out there and train regardless. Uh, when there is nobody there to cheer you on. It's then that you build up the mental capacity to be able to do what you need to do come race day. The way I deal with these enormous distances of running whole countries is I break it up into bite-sized pieces. Today's a classic example. I will run through three different provinces today. So instead of seeing this as a 75, 80k day, I see this, you know, I've already got two provinces behind me. I'm into the third one. When I knock this over, my day is done. So it's about breaking everything into bite-sized pieces. Hey, congratulations, mate, 1,000. Wow. But at the end of the day, all of my training is the sum total of everything I've ever done. I run every single day of my life. I run every single morning. I try and run every single uh, um, evening when I can. I take the stairs instead of catching an elevator or instead of going up an escalator. And so I try and make it just part of my natural life as well. I'm blessed to be able to train in an environment such as this. I'm here at a park in the centre of Sydney City. Uh, but I'm able to run around the trails here, I'm able to run on the tarmac around this place, uh, and then if I want to take a liking to the sand, soft sand and the beach, it's not that far away either. So we've got a fantastic environment that gives you both hot and cold, uh, rainy and dry, uh, gives you every sort of environment that you're looking for in order to train for any event anywhere on the planet. And the other advantage is good clean fresh air and good clean fresh drinking water to be able to take in as part of my training regime. You 
You know, there's this saying that I hear about people being fearful, this fear factor, actually being scared of failure. Uh, in a lot of cases, we're actually scared of success because when we're successful at something, uh, our whole life changes, our environment changes, it takes on a new perspective and then people expect so much more of us. I always think about the finish line, I always think about the end of the event. Uh, I plan the, the finish line, I imagine success, I imagine crossing the finish line with huge crowds there to clap and cheer me on. It's not always like that of course, but it's important to visualise what the finish will look like and make sure that you stay firmly focused on where you're headed. It's most important to stay grounded, to keep a perspective on life and understand that the best way to stay successful uh, is to continue to train and to make it part of your life, every single day of your life and to do stuff because you love it, not because you have to do it. Uh, so I have an absolute passion for running an absolute passion for motivating people and a passion to try and change people's lives for the better. That's what moves me, that's what enables me to get out of bed each morning and to get out there and to do the things that I do uh, and that's why I love it. Each and every one of you will find people in your own lives that if you, can, if you can make them believe that you are capable of great things, they will support you every step of the way.